Right, this is a lecture on formal languages and automata, and it's on how to reduce a DFA. So you may be given a DFA, or worked one out, or uh, and got one from an NDA maybe, uh, but it might not be the best. So you could have a hell of a lot, you could have uh, states where it just keeps adding A each time, uh, and you, it could condense all down to one with just A going back into itself. Right, so we do this using equivalence relations. And an equivalence relation is just saying uh, one state is, is the same as another state. And to initially divide them up, so our zero equivalence, this is what we start off with, this is where we, to start off with, these will be the final states and any other states that aren't final. So that's how we pair those off together. Um, to say something's equivalent in a different state, so we've got uh, k plus 1 here, just representing, so if we were to have equivalence 1, uh, then we have q, which is one state, will be equivalent to another state q prime, if and only if q is equivalent to q prime in the previous state, in the pre previous equivalent, sorry, and this means that if we're to apply, go down each of the edges, so delta QA would have to be equivalent in the previous equivalence that we want here in K plus 1. It must be equivalent to delta Q prime A. So it's Q applying A and Q prime applying A. And if you've got B, C's and D's, you also have to do the exact same. So delta QB equivalent to delta Q prime B. Uh, and once we reach the, the point where the next one is equal to the previous, that means we found the optimum DFA, so this is our, our equivalence. Right. So, example. We want to reduce this DFA here, starting with, we've got states 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we've only, we're going to apply le uh, letters A and B all over the place. And it's a complete one, and we can see that the final states are 2, 3, and 6, and the other ones are 1, 4, 5. So that's how we're going to split them up for the zero equivalents. And one thing that we need throughout solving this, it's very, well, it's much more useful than just reading off here, is we can plot exactly what happens at all times. So this is this, is this uh, diagram here. So we've got it's a transition diagram. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we've got the applications of A and B. So we, we've seen what's happened. So uh, case uh, 3, if we have an A, then it gives us back to 3, A3. If we have a B, then it'll take us to 6. Right. So now what we want to do is with, with, with our equivalents, which we've got here, uh, 0, we've got 1, 4, 5, which were the other states, and the 2, 3, 6, which were the final states. And we want to check uh, if any of these can be extended further. Because the rule for, uh, just ignore that for the time being, uh, to be equivalent 1, it has to be a previous equivalence in order to get there. So just ignore this for the moment, because that's the solution. <laughs> that shouldn't be there. Uh, if we have from this, we can have 1 could be equivalent to 4, it could also be equivalent to 5, or 4 could be equivalent to 5. We can't have crossovers because it needs to be a, a, an equivalence already. And from the three, 2, 3, 6, uh, 2 could be equivalent to 3, 2 could be equivalent to 6, or 3 could be equivalent to 6. We don't know yet. So the first one we'll check over here is 1 equivalence with the ratio 1 to 4. So we want delta 1. Uh, so is this true? Uh, if we apply 1 to, if we apply a to 1, we get 2, and if we apply a to 4, we get 4. So we've got 2, 4. Uh, if we check over here, 2 and 4 are in separate, so it is not equivalent. And we don't even need to check the b. Uh, the next one, 1, 5, so we check 1, we get 2, 5, we get 2, so that's fine. We also need to check the b, because two, 2, 2 is with itself. We check the B, so 1B gives us 4, 5B gives us 4 again. 
So that one is an equivalent. Four, five. Uh, let's ch check we've got uh, four and two when we apply A. Four and two, they're inseparate, so that is not. Two, three. Up here now. Two, three, we've got three, three, that's fine. And two, six, when we find the B, two, six is in the same. So that is another one. And we're just trying to go as far as we can. Two, six, <coughs> uh, three, six is fine, yes. Uh, two, five is not. So that one is not. And the last one, three, six. Uh, three, six, that's fine. And then six, five is not. So that one isn't either. So what we've found is that a lot of these aren't. The ones that come with us are, one is equivalent to five, so we'll take that one with us. Uh, two is equivalent to three, so we'll take that one with us. And the other ones are just singletons. So we've got four and six. You can get uh, more than two. You could get uh, three or four inside. Uh, if we were to have, say, one and five equivalent, and then also, say, uh, four, four and five equivalent. Then we can have. Then it would also leave that. That one would probably be in as well. So we can have them all, all three again. <coughs> so now what we've got to do is what we found: one, five, two, three, four, and six, is the exact same again. So if we just uh, to check whether one is equivalent to five in the second, and two is equivalent to three in the second. Then we do the exact same, so delta 1a, 2, 5, 2, that's fine, 4 and 4, that's that's fine. So that one is an equivalence, 2, 3, <coughs> uh, 2, uh, 3, 3, that, that is, and if you apply b, you get 2, 6, which is not grouped together. Right, so our new equivalence 2 is equal to this, 1, 5, 2, 3, 4, and 6. And we can see that if we apply 1 and 5 to itself again, then uh, of course we're going to get 2, 2, which is in the, in the same, and 4, 4, which will be in the same. And so we can say that this is equal to equivalence 3. <coughs> so this is our optimum equivalence. Now to redraw the diagram, you can either leave them as they are, uh, grouped together, or we like to rename them. So I've renamed this one, one, this two, three, four, and six. So we just got rid of the five. And now if we were to redraw our diagram, it would look like this. So we've got rid of the five, and we've got a loop here really, and this takes us to our sync state. Anything that has a final state in it, so if you were to have, if instead of 1, 5, this was 1, 2, because 2 is a final state, this would also have a ring around it. This would also be a final state. It just has to have one final state in the group that you've made in order to, for it to be a final state. <coughs> uh, and to draw this, if you're a bit unsure about that, we're just using this table here. So if we take the, the more difficult one here, 1, 5, we can see that uh, it's just coincidence that these have ended up at the exact same. Sometimes it won't be. If you end up with three in, then well, they can't be the same. So if we apply uh, one five, if we apply a to this, then we also have to check what happens when we apply a to five and it's two. So this takes us to two and the b takes us here. So that's how you draw them. I hope that's made sense.